Welcome to the Dog Talks Recovery Channel. I'm an alcoholic and addict named John. I'm going to get back into the reading soon, but what I'm going to do is read the acceptance pamphlet that uh, is something from way back in the day and is very helpful. I'm going to read it in sections in different little uploads. The title, Acceptance, The Way to Serenity and Peace of Mind by Vincent P. Collins. Abby Press. Facing life. Sooner or later, everyone arrives at a point where life seems to have become too big to cope with. Life is never really too much for us, but it can seem to be. When this happens, we have to get back life back in focus. We have lost our perspective, but it can be regained. You may have come to think of the world as unspeakably vast, the Earth 25,000 miles around, and outer space full of unknown worlds. But practically, the world is limited to your house, your shop, and your town. Even if you fly to India or Paris or Hong Kong, your world is no bigger than the interior of the airplane and no farther away than the nearest airport. You may have come to regard the world as teeming with millions and millions of people, in reality, your world consists of a very small number of people, those you live with, those you work with, and those you're acquainted with. In the awful, menacing future, that unending nightmare of shadowy days and years, can't even bear to think about it. Well, quit thinking about it at all. You live only a split second at a time. That's right, this minute. You can think of only one thing at a time. Do only one thing at a time. You actually live only one breath at a time. So stop living in a tomorrow that may never come and start living one day at a time, today. Plan for tomorrow, but live only till bedtime tonight. In short, that big boogeyman, life, can be cut down to his real size. Life is only this place, this time, and these people right here and now. This you can handle at least today. But my life is just one problem after another. Of course it is. That's life. I don't know how it is with you, but it took me a long time to realize that at least some of these problems were of my own making. For instance, I thought it was my duty to try to solve other people's problems, arbitrate their disputes, and show them how, I lived, how to live their lives. I was hurt when they rejected my unsolicited advice. I finally learned that you cannot help people unless they really need help or willing to be helped, want you to help them, and ask you to help them. Even then, you can only help them to help themselves. An old Arab whose tent was pitched next to a company of whirling dervishes once asked, Don't they bother you? No. What do you mean? What do you do about them? I let them whirl. I caused myself a lot of unnecessary grief by trying to be unselfish, to think of everybody else first, myself last, and to try to please everybody. But you can't please everybody. You can knock yourself out doing this and that and the other thing to please, your cousins and your sisters and your aunts. And you find out that they are not really effective one way or the other. Please everybody, nobody's pleased. Please yourself, at least you're pleased. Charity begins at home, and an enlightened self-interest is a basic endowment of the human nature. You can save yourself a lot of grief by admitting the futility of trying to please everybody, or of just trying to please somebody who just can't be pleased. A surprising number of people believe that other people can hurt their feelings. They won't believe you when you tell them it isn't so that no one can hurt you unless you let them. If irresponsible or unreasonable criticism causes you unhappiness, that is at least partly your own fault. We all say, I don't care what people say, but the tragic thing is that we do care, and pretending we don't makes things worse. What to do? Practice turning a deaf ear to the person who irritates or upsets you. Make up your mind that you are not going to let yourself pay any attention to what he or she says, and mean it. This you won't believe until you try it. If you refuse at least to try it, 
Some suspicious and cynical soul like me, for instance, might suspect that perhaps you've got so into the habit of having your feelings hurt that you'd be bored otherwise. So much for unnecessary suffering. How about real trouble? Trouble that comes regardless of what we do, think or say. That terrifying problem that has no apparent solution. Let's stop for a minute and see what a problem really is. A problem is a set of circumstances that threatens your well-being. And what are circumstances? Circumstances are people and things. So solving our problems really means getting people and things the way we want them. Sometimes we can do it, more often we can't. What then? There are several things we can do. We can look around to find somebody or something to blame. Or we can put ashes in our hair, wear shabby shoes with one down heels, accentuate our wrinkles, and make the rounds of our friends chanting, Poor, poor me. We can succeed in making our family miserable. We can haunt doctors. We can waylay our pastor, beat our breast, and blame God. What have I done to deserve this? Next is coming acceptance. 